a very good evening uh, to all the brothers and sisters uh, in christ so we thank our lord for giving it another opportunity to study his wonderful words of life so today uh, you see we are going to see a subject uh, on prayer prayer is a very very important thing in uh, everybody's life you see almost everybody in this world you see they do prayer you see let it be any religion you see any faith uh, or any belief everybody offer prayers to god so what does the actually prayer show in the life you see the prayer in the life of somebody shows that actually they are dependent upon god you see that there is somebody who is superior there is somebody who is the creator of entire thing and the things which they are not able to do and things which are beyond their control beyond their limit they want some uh, you see super power to help them to assist them to do these things you see therefore a uh, prayer you see is done to seek uh, sympathy uh, during the time of difficulties and trouble and trials uh, you see because uh, some things are uh, in such a way that uh, it can't be shared with anybody so prayer is actually a emotional uh, you see a grief uh, or emotional expression of our deep feelings uh, of our heart uh, silently you see spoken to god so god uh, is pleased with actually such type of prayer because while there are so many people who don't really believe in god at all and doesn't believe in the existence of god at least though it be to any other god though it be to any other uh, belief or something at least they trust that somebody there is a creator somebody there is a god at least uh, god is much pleased with uh, such thing okay so when do the people particularly pray you see so particularly we know very well that uh, usually people pray uh, early in the morning when they wake up or uh, the next prayer they do is actually you see only when they sleep so between the you see this time uh, between these two times uh, from the morning and night uh, you see they don't even pray for uh, you see anything uh, you see they don't know uh, for what reason they are paying you see it's become a habit to them uh, dear brethren you see uh, just because uh, they are born in a christian family just because they taught to pray you see they simply pray to god but uh, the prayer is without meaning just uh, like uh, as soon as we wake up in the morning you see we go directly uh, to the you see uh, to washroom and uh, wash our face uh, fresh up uh, you see and brush our teeth uh, really some people uh, really don't even know for what reason they are brushing their teeth uh, they simply brush their teeth because they are taught to brush uh, they do it uh, just casually like that only without even knowing the understanding and importance of it so similarly you see many people today pray to god without even knowing and without even understanding the actual meaning of it they will be praying you see they will be uttering words you see but their heart will be totally far from you see the actual uh, essence of prayer what they would actually be speaking you see their mind will be totally different uh, they will be thinking the something else uh, this is what uh, the bible says uh, let us read isaiah 29 13 uh, muna sister can you read isaiah 29 13 wherefore the lord said for as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and their and with their lips to honor me but have removed their heart far from me and their fear toward me is taught by the worship of men <laughs> thank you sir so the fear is taught by the worship of men you see their hearts are quite far from the lord they don't even know why they believe in the lord just for some sake uh, you see they trust in the lord and uh, similarly with the prayer still uh, there are some people 
who are Christians, who are worse than this one. They don't even pray in their life. You see, they pray only when trouble comes upon them. These people are like Apostle Peter. Jesus clearly warned the apostles in Garden of Gethsemane that uh, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. But Apostle Peter clearly neglected. And all the apostles clearly neglected. So once when the temptation came, what happened? He was completely, you see, gone and he deceived the master three times. Let us read Matthew 26, chapter 34 and 35. Uh, Amar brother, can you read Matthew 26, chapter 34 and 35? Jesus said unto him, Verily I said unto thee, that this, this night before the cook crow, cock crow, thou shalt deny me uh, freeze. Peter said unto him, Thought I should die with thee, yet will I not deny, deny thee. Likewise also said all the Disciples, arrest and trial. Mm. See, uh, though everybody should uh, reject you, I would never reject you. This was said by all the apostles. Sir. You know, what did Jesus say? Read verse 41 also, brother. Also 41? Yeah. Okay. Watch and pray that ye enter not into our temptations. The spirit indeed is uh, willing, but the flesh is weak. You see, Jesus therefore clearly said, watch uh, and pray lest you enter into temptation. So similarly, Many people, you see, they don't even pray to the Lord until they are, you see, in temptation, until they fall into temptation. You see, never before, you see, they go to the Lord in prayer. You see, dear brethren, we need to clearly understand the difference between two things. You see, being tempted is one thing and falling into temptation is another thing. So, two things has to be properly understood and properly balanced. See, Jesus was tempted in all ways. Correct, no? The Bible says that Jesus was tempted in all the ways as we are tempted. But uh, he did not commit sin. Read Hebrews 4.15. Hebrews 4.15. Joel brother, can you read Hebrews 4.15? For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings, feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, as we are yet without sin. Ah, you see, he was tempted in all the ways like uh, as we are, but yet he uh, is without sin. Uh, you see, but... Uh, we, we are tempted in all the ways as Jesus was tempted. But we, you see, are always with sin. You see, we fall into temptation. Therefore, dear brethren, see, temptations come. Temptations can never be avoided at all. See, Jesus also was tempted. That means, temptations came in his life. But Jesus never fell prey. Never fell into temptations. He never committed sin. You see, so he overcome it. See, therefore, dear brethren, whenever we feel any danger, the imminent first thing we should do is that we should take the matter to the Lord in prayer. Without any hesitation. Some people think, no, uh, it is uh, in uh, midday. It is not at night. You see, we are staying uh, until the close of the day. I'll wait. Uh, I'll take all the matters to the Lord at the end of the day and uh, pour out my heart before the Lord. Dear brethren, you see, we should never wait. You see, so there are two things and the two things has to be properly, you see, understood. Temptation and falling into temptation. 
temptations definitely come we can't avoid it at all thoughts will keep on generating in our mind but thinking upon those thoughts can definitely be avoided you see there is one prob see we cannot uh, you see prevent the birds uh, from flying over our head we can't isn't it so, so many birds are flying or can we prevent it no but at least we can prevent from those birds to making nest over our head that is we can prevent no? yes we can definitely prevent therefore dear brethren you see temptations can never be avoided huh? but yielding into temptation is a very different thing therefore you see we read now jesus was tempted in all ways you see uh, after 40 days of fasting what happened uh? jesus was tempted uh? you see the devil came to him you see the devil tempted him and saying you see come uh, fall uh, from the pinnacle of the temple come make this uh, stone as bread and eat <clears throat> you see huh? but did uh, jesus uh, yield into temptations no those were the temptations uh, you see that our lord got uh, read matthew romister please open your bible to matthew <clears throat> chapter 4 chapter 4 uh, verse 3 and 4 and when the tem tempter come to him he said if thou be the son of god command that these stones be made bread but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of god yes yes it is very good so here you see jesus was tempted by the devil now how did the devil approach our lord jesus ah huh? the devil approached our master saying if thou be the son of god You see, if you are the son of God, then do this one. You know how was the temptation? It was very subtle. It was as if telling to Jesus, "If you are really your father's child, if you are really God's son, if you are really the son of God, then do this one." You see, imagine if somebody comes and tells us, "If you are really your parents' child, do this one." What will uh, we do? Immediately we'll react uh, wildly, you know. But see. the reaction of jesus you see this is the difference of being tempted and falling into temptation you see jesus never committed this is in therefore jesus warned clearly you see watch and pray therefore the two things are required watch and pray lest you enter into temptations you see the two things are required we need to watch you see we need to watch ourselves you see what's the bible uh, uh, you see the way we are and how we are and we also need to submit all these things to prayer to our lord uh, therefore these two things are very very necessary if you see brethren actually the christian the righteous person is actually compared to a beautiful tree in the bible you see the tree is good until it has got lot of leaves and good roots and all so the tree is a christian the prayers are like leaf you see only if the tree is having good leaf and there is no root does it make any good use no what will happen if the wind comes and blows the tree will fall down that means what dear brethren just prayer is not sufficient you see the roots are also important study the study of word of god is also important therefore you see so many people they are uh, uh, christians good christians but they are not strong in the truth at all why because they don't have root at all once the trials come the temptations come immediately they fall down therefore these two things are important only roots are there then no leaves are there means you won't get any fruits therefore these two things are very important prayer as well as study the word of god you see the bird has two wings so similarly uh, our life should be composed of two things study and prayer so prayer study 
and prayer are both equally important. Some people, after learning to the, you see, coming to the Bible study, they don't pray at all. You see, that's very wrong thing. All our uh, matters uh, should be uh, poured to the Lord. You see, dear brethren, you see, <clears throat> therefore, you see, these two things are very, very important. Uh, therefore, you see, once uh, there was a selection uh, for a, a driver, uh, you see, uh, course was happening, you see, sir. Oh, a big company owner was hiring a driver. So he called for an interview. So many people came. Then uh, one by one, uh, you see, he called everybody and asked, uh, see, we're going on a hilltop. <clears throat> you see, very high hill. From there, the depth is very, uh, very, you see, deep. Uh, the road is not so wide enough. Uh, so you have to be very careful. Now, how close can you take the car? You see, uh, to the edge of the road, uh, the question was asked himself. So the driver said, Oh, sir, I will take as much close as possible. And the driver said, Oh, I will take just one feet far from that, uh, you see, uh, border of the road. Uh, so similarly, one by one, one by one, uh, so many people gave replied. So nobody was offered the job. So ultimately, last one driver was there, he said, he went to the interview. Same question was asked to him, how close can you drive the car uh, on the top of a very high mountain? If you fall, uh, nothing will be there. You will die. So how close can you take the car uh, to the edge of the road? Uh, he asked him. The driver carefully asked, uh, sir, please let me know, what is the width of the road? He said, he said the width of the road is uh, 10 feet. Then he said, sir, I will stay as far as possible from the corner of the road so that I can don't fall into the ditch. So the owner was well pleased, you see, and a job was offered to him. So similarly, dear brethren, we need to be very far from this temptation as far as possible. You see, we should never tempt the Lord. What did Jesus say? See, the second temptation you see, the Jesus was offered that you fall from the pinnacle of the temple. Angels will come and save you. He, again, the Satan quoted from the scriptures. Did uh, Jesus fall from the pinnacle of the temple? Thinking that God would definitely save him? No. If you were done, God would never save him. You see, we should never tempt God. Therefore, uh, falling into temptations and being tempted are two things to brethren. So, we need to watch and pray. Watch the word of God. Watch our weaknesses. Pray. Pray for the strength for the Lord to overcome, to fight all these things. You see, therefore, what did Apostle Paul say? Apostle Paul said in 1st season 5.17, what did he say? He said, pray without ceasing. Isn't it? Uh, read. Uh, Muna sister, can you read 1st season 5.17? Pray without ceasing. Yes. Pray without, you see, ceasing. You see, now what does it mean, uh, pray without ceasing? You see, that means uh, we should keep on repeating the same thing. You see, some people, when they pray, they keep on repeating the same thing. Oh, Master, Master, oh, Mada, oh, Master, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Savior, oh, King, oh, Lord. You see, only this one only. So what is there in left over in the prayer? You see, nothing. You see, Master, oh Jesus, oh God, oh Lord, oh thank you, oh Lord, bless you, Lord. Only these things. So what is that you are telling to the Lord? You see, this is not the meaning of a prayer without ceasing. Some people think that, uh, oh, that means we should keep on repeating the same thing again and again and again and again to the Lord. And what did Jesus say? You see, what did Jesus say about uh, repeating our prayers? You see, read... <clears throat> Matthew 6 7. Matthew 6 7. Uh, Amar brother, can you read Matthew 6 7? Matthew 6 7. But when he pray, use not vain repeating as as the heathen do, do, for they think that they shall be. Heard for their much speaking. Mm, you see, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. 
keep on repeating the same thing again and then doing very fastly prayer without even thinking you see ha huh? some people explain everything to god you see dear brethren there is no need for us to explain anything to god you can keep on repeating the same thing now who does the you see person who repeat the same thing what does the bible say heathen heathen means the person who doesn't know god he doesn't know god he is not even understood god therefore how is he expressing himself uh, using the same same thing repeating again and again things that as if we keep on repeating the matter and again and again god will uh, hear our prayers fast uh, no dear brethren you see no jesus clearly said use not the same things repeat again the same thing then what is the meaning of uh, pray without ceasing dear brethren pray without ceasing means uh, you see always our heart should be in attitude of prayer we should never wait till the end of the day or only pray at the beginning of the day and close at the end of the day no our heart should always be in the attitude of prayer whenever we fall immediately we should seek the lord for help whenever god gives us a victory immediately we should seek the lord in prayer whenever we fall no you see we should seek the lord for forgiveness we should seek the lord for more strength grace mercy thank the lord for giving such a trial you see and uh, you see express our sincere desire to overcome it uh, you see and uh, if you have won a victory by god's grace uh, that is a moment to thank the lord uh, for giving a uh, strength uh, to courage to overcome it to help us to teach all these things uh, given as a good experience uh, you see by doing such thing what does it show it shows our trust in the lord that we are less dependent on self we are more dependent on the lord uh, you see and our sincere desire that we want to do the lord's will always and we have the sincere desire and urge that uh, we need to develop christ likeness uh, our motive is expressed clearly to god uh, and we are running for it uh, you see dear brethren so we should uh, never hesitate uh, you see in such matters you know let us see an example in the bible about nehemia you see nehemia pray to the lord now how did he pray let us open our bibles to nehemia first chapter joel brother can you read nehemia second chapter uh, verse 1 uh, 2 3 and 4 here if you see name is second chapter 1 to 4 here if you see the background of nehemia we all know that nehemia was a cupbearer you see cupbearer means what da you see whenever uh, the uh, what do you say the king uh, used to uh, eat meals or uh, you see drink uh, you see the portion has to be given by this cupbearer some people misunderstand um, the meaning uh, that means cupbearer means what da cupbearer means uh, the person who is always uh, king will be holding the cup like this you see and uh, the cupbearer's duty is always keep on pour wine 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 that is completely be always uh, you see submerged in wine no 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 cupbearer means uh, all the things uh, you see huh? whatever things uh, you see the king ate was first actually tasted by this cupbearer why because probably you see some enemy would mix some poison and give it to the king and king would die so if that food or drink is first tasted by this cupbearer then the king's life will be saved so this was the reason always the king used to have a cupbearer now imagine such a responsible job now how should the cupbearer be cupbearer should always be cheerfully happy in the presence of a the king or else king will doubt and king will kill him now this is the background now let us see what happened in nehemia read brother nehemia second chapter verse 1 and it came to pass in the month nisan in 20th year of artaxerxes the king that wine was before him and i took up of the wine and gave it on to the king now i had not been 
before time said said in his presence underline now i had not been before time sad in his presence that means you see huh nehemiah was always cheerful now suddenly he is sad before the king's presence now what would happen now the king would doubt him see what happened verse 2 hmm wherefore the king said unto me why is thy countenance sad saying thou art not sick this is nothing else but sorrow of heart then i was very sore afraid ah you see wherefore the king questioned king saw that name he was very dull very sad no king clearly recognized something is troubling nehemia then uh, he questioned nehemia why why you are so sad you don't seem to be sick that uh, immediately what happened to him sir nehemia was very afraid why because if the king comes to know there is something problem with nehemia immediately without even uh, inspection or anything inquiry he will be hanged to death so it's very tough situation dear brethren so he was very afraid it seems sir then king answers you see eh huh? tell me what is the problem then nehemia tells how can i be happy when my father's uh, sepulcher and the walls of jerusalem you see of fallen the jerusalem is without walls how can i be happy you see huh uh, read brother verse 3 uh and said unto the king let the king live for ever why should not my countenance be sad when the city the place of my fathers is uh, spoilstress light waste and the gates thereof consume with fire hmm. how can i be happy when it is consumed with fire then the king tells okay tell me what you want from me i'll do it for you Read verse four. Ah. Huh? Then the king said unto me, "For what dost thou make request?" Ah. So I pray to the God of the heaven. Very good, brother. So king said, "What do you want me to do? You tell, I'll do." Then what does the Bible say? So I pray to the God of heaven. You see, Nehemiah prayed to the Lord in the presence of the king. Then verse five, brother. Ah. Huh? and i said unto the king okay if... okay brother thank you so immediately you see the we read the verse it says king questioned nehemia nehemia immediately prayed to the lord and immediately reacted and said and i said unto the king now you tell me how much time did nehemia take to pray tell me how much time did nehemia take to pray tell me You're all there, no? Joel brother, Munna sister, Romi sister, Amar brother. How much time did Nehemiah take to pray in front in front of the king? Did he kneel down before the king? Did he, you see, fold his hands and pray to the Lord? How much time did he take to pray to the Lord? What did he pray to the Lord? Tell me. Think. Joel brother, tell me. Yeah, no answer, sir. What is this? What happened? Everybody are there or not? Huh? Okay. See, king. Before the king, can somebody kneel and pray? No, not at all possible. Then Nehemiah should have prayed where? Tell me. Did he pray in front of everybody? Tell me, Joel, brother. Munna sister, ah, uh, Romi sister, tell. No. Did he pray before everybody? No. Okay, then where where he could have prayed? Where was it possible for him to pray? You see, ah, huh? the only way that he could pray before the king is in his heart. You see, and it took only a few seconds. Now you tell me, in few seconds. what can nehemia pray to the lord there is only one thing that he can pray lord let thy will be done 
isn't it? He poured out his heart, you see, in front of the king, but nobody knew that he prayed to the Lord and immediately answered to the king. And uh, in that time, God had already answered his prayers. See, this is the way we should be. This is the meaning of what Apostle Paul said, pray without ceasing. Never hesitate to take all the matters to the Lord. You see, dear brethren, whom do we have in heaven? You see, whom do we have in earth? You see, we have nobody who can understand our feelings, you see, our thoughts, except our Lord. You see, dear brethren, but today, uh, the situation is totally different. When something happens, immediately we'll call everybody and tell, oh, this, 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 this happened. But what response do we get from them? Nothing. No response from anybody at all. So automatically what happens? You see, we get disgraced. But yet we do the same thing again. Why? Dear brethren, because God doesn't give the answer immediately. He doesn't communicate to us on the spot. But uh, if you call somebody, if you share with somebody, immediately they respond now. That is the natural tendency of our human being. But uh, we should actually wait upon the Lord and submit everything to the Lord. God knows uh, our sitting and standing. Even before what we speak, uh, each and every words are known by our master. You see, we should pour our heart to the Lord. Read Psalm 739. Verses 1 to 4. Muna sister, can you read Psalms 139, 1 to 4? O Lord, thou hast sourced me and know me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understand my uh, thought afar off. Thou compassest my path, path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not uh, a word in my tongue, but, O oh Lord, uh, thou knowest it all together. You see, you know my sitting and my standing. There is nothing that is hidden from thee, Lord. So, Lord knows everything, dear brethren. Dear brethren, just think, uh, whom do we have uh, in uh, heaven? Whom do we have in earth uh, who can understand and properly sympathize with us? Uh, is none than our master, dear brethren. So we should pour our hearts to him. Uh, you see, so he loved us when we were sinners. Isn't it? He died for us when we were sinners. Uh, now do you think uh, he will not love us when we are trying to fight our sinful activities and try to become like Christ? Definitely he will love us. Uh, definitely he will sympathize with us. Uh, there is no doubt at all uh, you see, dear brethren, when he sympathized with us, uh, even before, should he not do it now? Definitely he will do it. Uh, so, we should take everything to the master. Read Hebrews 4, chapter 15 and 16. Uh, Robinster, can you read Hebrews 4, chapter 15 and 16? For we have not an High priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our uh, infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You see, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. You see, boldly we should come. You see, we never see, we should never think that God is seeking opportunity or mistakes in us. No, God would never see mistakes. You see, he knows that we are sinful, we can't be perfect. Hence, he has made provision of Jesus. You see, but when we take all the matters to the Lord, we should keep one thing, that God has his own plan. And he will never bend his plan for anything of us. You see, and all our matters, though we request to the Lord, we should tell, Lord, let thy will be done, not my will. How did Jesus pray? In the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed to the Lord, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. 
but not my will, but let thy will be done. This is the same way, dear brethren. You see, in all the matters when we take to the Lord, we should say, let thy will be done. Not our will be done. Dear brethren, you see, sometimes what happens, our prayers, uh, you see, are delayed. You see, the prayer answers to the prayers are delayed. You see, we should never lose the heart. You see, we should uh, continue to pray. You see, sometimes our prayers are, you see, very delay answered. Why? Because, you see, God wants us to realize the preciousness of the value which we are requesting. You see, if God just gives like that one only, you see, we won't realize that value. Dear brethren, like for example, the people of Israel were terribly tortured in Egypt. You see, they prayed to the Lord for nearly 215 years. You see, but uh, Israel people were delivered only after that one. Because God has own plan. God had an apt time. You see, they delivered the people of Israel. But once they delivered, you see, they were very, very happy to leave Egypt. So, similarly, our prayers uh, sometimes will be answered later. So, we should never lose the heart for that one. And many people misunderstand uh, so many verses uh, and think that they should pray to the Lord for whatever they want. You see, Jesus said, no, Matthew 7, 7, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. You see? So, many people think uh, that we can ask whatever we want uh, to the Lord. Read Matthew 7, 7. Uh, Amar brother, can you read Matthew 7, 7 brother? Okay, Matthew 7, 7. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and he shall find. Uh, knock and it shall be open uh, unto you. Very good. See, knock and it shall be open unto you. Seek and you shall find. So everybody thinks that God is like an ATM. We should keep on knocking. You see, then automatically what will happen? Door will open. You see, we should keep on seeking. Uh, so we will find until we find. Now what do they think? You see, all worldly things. You see, they would have fallen into depth. You see, they would tell Lord, Oh Lord, give me money, give me money. I want to clear all my loan. You see, they want wealth of this world. You see them, how wealthy they are, how blessed they are. Uh, they think that all the worldly blessings is only that is the main thing in our life. Uh, you see, they want good food, uh, good health, uh, job, marriage, all worldly things. Or else, keep on binding Satan. Uh, in the name of the Jesus, I command the devil to be bound. You see, dear brethren, you see, uh, uh, is this what Jesus said? Uh, uh, ask and you shall receive whatever you want to keep on asking. Uh, you see, uh, yes. Jesus will give us everything. But there is a condition. You see? Uh, how? What is the condition? Jesus also said, no. Whatever you ask, I will give you. Uh, correct, no? Uh, Jesus. What did Jesus say? Let us read. John 15, 7. Joel, brother. John 15, 7, brother. If, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Mm, you see, whatever you ask in my name, you see, huh? it shall be done unto you. So, everybody thinks, oh, you ask in Jesus' name, everything will be done. So, they keep on praying to the Lord, prayer warrior. You might have heard now, prayer warriors. You see, like Jacob, Jacob fought the entire night until Lord blessed him. So, prayer warriors, they keep on praying until the Lord blesses them. Eh? Dear brethren, you see, is it the proper thing that you should keep on praying to the Lord uh, like a prayer warrior? You see, what does the Bible say? Imagine, see, you are all parents, you have children. If your children keeps on coming and ask uh, you the same thing again and again, what will you do if the child is very small? You see, uh, you will neglect it. But if you keep on asking, even after so many years of growth also, if you keep on asking the same thing stubbornly, you see, a very, uh, you see, very stubborn uh, and not even bending, and keep on asking the same thing uh, and fighting uh, for it, uh, 
and shouting and crying for it. Uh, what will you do? Dear brethren, you will try to explain to you see the child that this is not the way. But if he doesn't understand, what you will do? You see, he will give you one uh, you see, nice beatings. Uh. Similarly, it is with the Lord. Lord doesn't like that if you keep on shouting, jumping and going him in prayer. God doesn't like it. Yes, God answers all our prayer. But God doesn't like this attitude of prayer. Yeah, why? Because Apostle James clearly says that you ask, you see, the Lord, whatever you want, therefore your prayers are not answered. Read James 4.3. James 4.3. Munna sister, can you read James 4.3? He asks and receives not because he asks amiss and that he may consume it upon your loss. Mm. You ask and your prayer is not answered. Why? Because you ask that your lust may be fulfilled. Your prayers are selfish prayers. Therefore, God doesn't answer your prayers. That means, one verse says, all uh, things uh, will be answered. Whatever you ask, you will give. But one verse says, not everything will be given. Then, it clearly shows uh, that there is a condition for us, uh, you see, that God may answer all our prayers. Uh, there is a condition. And what is that condition? You see, we should understand this one. So many people, they don't even understand this condition. But simply hold on to one thing. You ask in Jesus' name, it shall be given. Ask in Jesus' name, it shall be given. Now let us read that verse again. John 15, 7. Let us read one more time that verse again. You see, uh, Romans, sister, please read John 15, 7, sister. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, he shall ask what he uh, will, and it shall be done unto you. Ah, Jesus said, you see, whatever you ask, it shall be done unto you. But there was a condition before that verse. What is the condition? If you remain in me, and if my words remain in you, if you fulfill two conditions, you know, whatever you want, you ask, definitely God will do it. This is not a failure. <laughs> At all. But first, uh, these two conditions have to be done. Now, what is the meaning of these two conditions? Let us understand. First, if you remain in me, what is the meaning of remain in me? That means we need to be consecrated, properly immersed and joined to become the body member of Jesus Christ. What did Apostle Paul say? Romans 6.3 Know you not that all of you were baptized they are baptized into his death. That is the real meaning of discipleship of Jesus. So what is the meaning of being a disciple of Jesus? That you are dead to the world, you see, and uh, your life is hid in Christ. You are the body member of Jesus Christ. That is the meaning, the remaining in Jesus. Correct? No, first condition. Then second condition my word should abide in you. God's word should be where? Eh? Should not be in my in our Bible. It should be there in our heart. Not only in mind, it should be there in our by heart. Now, dear brethren, if these two conditions are met, you know, you ask whatever you want, definitely will be answered. If you want a Benz car, God will give you a Benz car. If you want an airplane, definitely God will give you an airplane. But these two conditions has to be met. Now, think, if these two conditions are met, will a person ask for any of the worldly thing? No, because he's dead to the world. All his worldly case, everything is taken care of the Lord. Lord has promised to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, all these things shall be given unto you. So, Lord has promised all our earthly things you see, that uh, these things have been taken care of. You see, Jesus said, no, don't worry what you shall eat, what you shall drink. Don't worry at all. Why? Beautifully that verse says, why? Let us read. Matthew 6.31. Uh, Amar brother, can you read Matthew 6.31 brother? Okay. 
okay math 2631 therefore uh, take no 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 doubt doubt saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or uh, where which where we girls shall we be of clothes continue continue okay for for after all these things do the uh, gentiles seek for your heavenly father note that we that he have need uh, of all these things ah all these things are sought after the gentiles gentiles are the people who seek for what we eat what we drink where we sleep oh where is my house what is my future that's what the people think no but your father in heaven knows what you want imagine if you have a child you see huh will the child ever be worried oh you you tomorrow uh, school fees has to be paid oh you tomorrow electric bill has to be paid oh you day after tomorrow rent has to be paid will the child ever worry no until he takes the responsibility none of these things the child will worry all these things will be taken care by whom by their parents by their father the child has so much of faith it doesn't worry at all similarly dear brethren we should have faith on the lord all our worldly things let it be whatever you see small small things he said not even a hair falls to the ground without god's permission so he is taking care of all the many things so he will take care of everything but huh what should we do we should seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness so such a person what will he ask to the lord will he ask for car bungalow you see a beautiful girl a good education i5 salary job all these things are no dear brethren they won't ask for any of these things they will ask for only for spiritual things because whatever the master gives them they will be happy you see what will they ask for they will ask for more grace you see ask for forgiveness of sins ask for more of the strength you see ask for uh, you see grace to develop the fruits of the holy spirit ask that we may be good brothers and sisters before everybody ask that we may not misbehave before everybody to be polite to be humble to develop that christ in us you see they seek for more strength from the lord more of the holy spirit you see to overcome all these things you see dear brethren ha huh? did uh, jesus uh, jesus uh, any of the apostles pray for the worldly things no he himself is a beautiful example dear brethren that our prayer should be you see for spiritual things now do you think uh, our lord would not answer such a prayer yes you would definitely answer jesus said you see which of your father if a child comes and asks for a fish which of your father, you shall give a serpent you won't give a serpent You say you know what uh, has to be given to your child. You will definitely give a fish only. So you being evil, if you know to give good things, uh, how much more? Uh, you see, shall our heavenly Father know to give you good things, uh, especially the Holy Spirit? Uh, read Matthew seven chapter nine to eleven. Joel brother, Matthew seven chapter nine to eleven brother. or what man is dear of you whom if his son asks bread will he give him a stone or if he asks a fish will he give him a serpent if ye then being evil know how to give good gift unto your children how much more shall your father which is heaven give good things to them that ask him no you see very clearly it says no you being evil know what good things uh, has to be given uh, to your children so will not god give the holy spirit holy spirit means what uh, the power the strength the courage to overcome all our evil things uh, dear brethren if he sincerely ask the lord uh, forgive my sins uh, lord uh, today i want to be a good child uh, Lord, today I want to be like Christ as much as possible for me. Lord, today I want to remain humble. Today, Lord, I want to keep my mouth little bit small. 
rather than speaking so many things. Uh, Lord, uh, today I want to be good among the brethren. Uh, I want to be a good example among the brethren. If he asks such prayer, do you think uh, Lord would never uh, you see, answer our prayers? Lord would definitely answer our prayers. Uh, you see, dear brethren, we should ask for trials. Uh, Lord, uh, I am called. I am called for uh, to become like Christ. Uh, please give sufficient of trials and courage and strength to overcome those trials also. If he asks the trials, dear brethren, God would definitely help us to overcome and to develop into Christ likeness. Uh, this is the prayer of God's children. And how should our prayer be? What did Jesus tell? Huh? Whatever you ask, ask in faith, it shall be answered. So whenever we pray, we should pray to the Lord in faith, without hesitation, without stammering, without doubting the Lord. So if you have faith, you see, definitely our prayers will be answered. Right now, See, read Matthew 21, 21 to 22. Muna sister, can you read Matthew 21, chapter 21 and 22? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto his mount, this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, uh, it shall be done, and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing it shall receive. See, ask ye believing in prayer, it shall definitely happen. Therefore, our prayer should be in faith, believing, trusting the Lord. And how should our prayer should be? Huh? Should we pray a lengthy prayer? You know, if somebody is given the opportunity, they take, uh, they teach divine plan of ages to the God. Such and such thing happened in the first world, second world, third world, everything will explain. No, dear brethren. You see, whenever you are called to pray, our prayer should be very simple. You see, a personal prayer, so how much ever you want to, you can pray. That's not a short. But when you are called to pray, dear brethren, our prayers should be very simple and to the point. Now, how did Elijah pray in front of everybody? He did not make any good drama or big drama before everybody is what everybody could, uh, you see, uh, recognize or identify something. Simply prayed, if it, uh, uh, if you are the real God, consume it with fire. Immediately, a Lord answered his prayers. Dear brother, our prayer should also be very simple. Okay. Now, question. Let me see who is going to answer. Should we pray for the whole world? And you... And should we pray for the politicians? Should we pray for the world? Tell me. Why nobody is answering. Why? Huh? Joel brother? Muna maybe, sister? Tell me. Yes. Should we pray? Yes. We should pray for the world. Okay. Muna sister, how about you? Should we pray for the world? Should we pray for the politicians? The world, brother. Yeah. The unbelievers, should you pray for them? Yes, brother. Very good stuff. Okay, good. Romister, Amar brother, how about you? I do think yes, brother. We okay, need to good. Pray for the good. Amar brother, how about you, brother Amar? Um, yes, brother. Okay, good. See, very good. Nice answer. See, whatever we do, we already have an example. A role model is there. Our hero is there. Who is our hero? Who is our role model? Jesus. Jesus. Very good. Now, we should see whether Jesus did the same or not. Correct? Huh? Let us see. Come on. John 17.9. Uh, Romy sister, please read John 17.9 sister. I pray for them. I pray for, pray not for the world, huh? but for him which thou hast given me, for thy are, they are my thine. Read again, sister. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Ah, wait, wait, wait. Did Jesus pray for the world? No. Ah, the Jesus did not pray for the world. 
then what should we do? Should we pray for the world? Now tell me the answer. Yes or no? No. No. Jesus never prayed. So our answer should also be definitely no only because we are the followers of Jesus. Now, why did Jesus not pray for the world? You know, today in all the churches they pray for the unbelievers. You know why? They think if they don't pray for them, huh? There is no salvation for them. Now, where will they go? Where will they go after their death uh, without accepting Jesus? Uh? Hell. Hell. Uh, that is the reason they fear. Oh, we'll pray for them. Jesus never prayed because Jesus had faith that at his second advent, the unbelievers will come back to the same world and understand him. Then Satan is born. So, he never prayed for the world. Similarly, we should also never pray for the world. Our target is not the world. Our target is not unbelievers. Our target is the Christians. First of all, these Christians themselves doesn't know the Bible at all. First of all, we should pray for them that their eyes and ears of understanding may be opened properly. What did Jesus say? I never pray for them. I pray for you. Whom thou hast given me. Similarly, our prayer should be only for the brethren, not for the world at all. World will be having sufferings. Now, the sufferings will increase severely. There is no doubt. Very shortly, you see, war is going to happen. It is going to get to a very peak level. You see, so, our prayers are for the brethren. That is what Jesus said. I pray only for you. Now, what about the politicians? Should we pray for the politicians and all? Huh? No. You see, why? Because there was a time that when apostles all lived, we were supposed to pray for the, you see, the ministers, the politicians. But now, Jesus has already returned. He started to pound Daniel's second chapter, the multi-metallic structure. Stone is coming, hit the feet, is pounding. Each and every nation is being we can, we can, we can. None of the nations has power. So we should not be praying for these uh, leaders. No use at all. Jesus is the written king of kings. He is going to shortly establish his kingdom. Let it be any minister. He is going to smite them. He is going to pound them. All their powers will be taken off. So dear brethren, you see, we need to follow the footsteps of Jesus. Okay. Now, what are the positions we can pray? The Bible says that you can sit in a chair and pray, you can stand and pray. You see, some people walked and prayed, some people bowed and prayed. You see, some fell prostrate before God and prayed, some people lifted their hands and prayed, some people knelt and prayed. You see, whatever personally you want to do, you can definitely do. But when it comes to the ecclesia, you see, it's better that we stand, fold our hands and pray. You see, stand up. Fold our hands, close our eyes and pray. Some people know, you see, they stand up, they don't even fold their hands. You see, their hands will be moving, or it will be in the pocket, then start praying, you see, without even uh, giving information. Huh? The best process is that, uh, you see, and the good, uh, you see, the, the thing that which brings the uh, proper feeling and attitude of prayer and a proper decorum is that, uh, you see, and a proper discipline is that uh, you should stand you see, join our hands, you see, and uh, close our eyes and uh, begin with a prayer. How? Let us now start with a prayer. Or let us now offer prayers to the Lord. Let us now pray to the Lord. You see, because the brother has to be prepared. You see, just simply coming to the stage, okay, tuck, immediately start prayer. When it comes to the Ecclesia, the proper discipline and decorum has to be maintained. And sisters have always to be covered their head. Always the sisters' head should be compulsorily covered when they sit for the prayer. Dear brethren, so, dear brethren, therefore, this is the subject about prayer. So, any questions, any doubts you have, you can definitely ask me. Anybody, any questions, any doubts? Joel brother. 
Any doubts? No question. No question, brother. Okay. Pranav sister. No question, brother. Uh, Romi sister. No question, brother. Thank you. Amar brother. No question, brother. Okay. Okay, then. Thank you. Then. Uh, 